Um, as far as the media goes, the last slide to show you says Latino and Hispanic are marketing tools. We have Cristina Saralegui, we have Don Francisco, or should we better say Mario Luis Kritzenberger Blumenfield, which is his actual name, but that won't sound cool to say Don Mario Luis Kritzenberger Blumenfield Presenta. No, you're not gonna get that. You're gonna get Don Francisco Presenta because again, they want our people to relate to him, right? He's a, I believe he's a European Jew. We have Latino 96.3. We have the Hispanic magazine. We have the Latina magazine. Hispanic magazine, that, that's actually pretty accurate. Penelope Cruz is a, a Spaniard, so that's, that pretty much goes with her. Um, but that wouldn't go for a Mexican or Central American Nicantlaca woman. And then we have Latina. We have a, a bleach blonde, um, self-hating uh, Mexicana, uh, Cristina Aguilera. But anyway, that's besides the point. And basically, what's behind the actual the, the historical use of Latino Hispanic is, is genocidal, and that's, we, we've been talking about that. But as far as colonialism in the actual current view, it's, it's profitable. It says, by grouping all people who speak Spanish into one category, corporations can target one audience at the same time and therefore maximize their exposure and profit. Aha! That's great. Okay, everyone that speaks Spanish, instead of me as a corporation head, instead of me trying to you know decipher ways to target an audience, because this is all this is all uh, capitalism, corporations, and trying to get your audience. So you know what? Let's come up with something that says you know what? All of these people that speak Spanish, and 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 we're in the millions. So, so let's put them all into one category, and with that way we can sell them our product. We're just gonna target them, target them all at the same time. You don't have to worry about making distinctions into your uh, demographics. You don't have to worry about losing funding because all of your commercial money you can just target it all in one, bunch it up in one little casket. You're good to go. Everyone could benefit from your product. You know, it's like they're they're very used to promoting these concepts on Francisco Latino. Um, in print, and audio, it's everywhere. The whole colonialism, it's very hip to be Latino, it's very hip to be Hispanic. Um, I've met people that say they don't like saying Mexican because Hispanic sounds better or Latino sounds more exotic. I mean, it's very, you know, some bullshit ideas that we have behind identity. And uh, people like this are promoting it and that's what our people are following. We follow what's on TV, we follow what's on the radio. And the idea here is be white, um, even, if, even if you speak Spanish, um, you're still different because you're still white, but you speak Spanish, so that's cooler. So that's the whole pride behind Latino and Hispanic is you're the cool version of a European because you speak Spanish, so that's exotic. Again, that's the commercialization of uh, colonialism. And the next one is a graph. And this graph was made by Olin um, a few years back. Uh, we're working on a new one, but this one pretty much it hasn't changed since then. And basically, if you see here, in the U.S. as a whole, um, as a whole, if they put together, this is 82% of the so-called Hispanic or Latinos as a whole are actually Mexican Central Americans. So out of the 100% that they counted for that were Hispanic or Latino, identified as Hispanic or Latino, out of that whole 100, 82% of that were made up of uh, our people, Mexican Central American. Next graph, in the Western U.S., out of all the so-called Hispanic or Latinos in that 100% in the uh, Western United States, 92% of that were made up of our people, Mexican, Central American. And I mean, when you look at something like this, you're, you ask yourself, why are we, Nicantalaca people, why are we forced to um, let go of our identity, denounce our identity, and fit into this, this, this actual umbrella when we make up the majority of those figures. It makes no sense, but again, when the education system doesn't teach your history, when you have no cultural um, knowledge of self, when you don't have that awareness of your true history and identity, you're not gonna question this. You're gonna go with it, you're, gonna, you're not gonna see anything wrong with it, but when you see the actual numbers behind this, it should make sense. I mean, our people, we're being fooled um, with our money, we're being fooled with our culture. I mean, they're really just using us. We just, we're just empty vessels that they can just use, and this is a big example of how that is working. And the next statistic is saying that uh, by 2050, we are anticipated to be almost 30% of the population at another 100 years, maybe 50%, at another 100 years, uh, 60 to 70%. So this is to show that even though we are 
the biggest part of their so-called Hispanic or Latino um, consensus or, or statistics, we as a people within the next 100 to 200 years, we're going to be the majority in what is known the United States. But again, how does that benefit us if we do not know our history, we do not know our culture, we do not know our, our heritage? We're going to be just replicas of replicas of replicas of ignorance of people that don't know their history, self-hating, are just going to be consuming whatever's on TV, are just going to be labeling themselves whatever Europeans want. And I mean, that's not going to benefit us. But if you imagine, if you could just start imagining that in those, um, in the anticipation, that figure that we're going to be the majority, imagine the majority of us educated, knowledgeable, of who we are, in control of who we are, of our identity, of our culture, of what's being taught to our children. That's going to be a very different future. That's what we in the Michigan movement, we're thinking long term. We're not just thinking right now or, okay, we want this to stop now. Univision's going to stop this next year because that's not going to happen. We're millions of people. We, we have a very uh, horrible case of ignorance in our community, but we know that eventually this message will get across. We know that eventually people will listen, that people will change their mind, that people will wake up. Because why do we know that that's going to happen? Because we woke up. We members of the Michigan movement, people here in this room, people that are watching this, people are waking up. They're starting to think of things that were not presented to them in history and, and education system. We're given uh, another view of the world another way to, of understanding how this society is working. And that is a huge, huge um, accomplishment. And other images here, colonialism produces self-hate. We have blue eye contacts, green eye contacts, hazel contacts. Then we have the baseball player um, who bleached his skin because he said that, you know, he wanted to be more handsome. And then we have skin bleach. Skin bleach is starting to get a huge number of clients in Mexico. Um, so just to show you that you know, self-hate does sell, and there's a big market of that. Um, and talking about, I know we talked about a lot, I'm talking about, about identity, colonialism. It's what we're trying to do in the Michigan movement is decolonize the way we see ourselves, decolonize the way we see the world, take off those European lens that we've been forced to wear for the last 519 years, and finally and honestly start seeing our history and start connecting to this information that we're talking about because we're not white people, we're not European, we are Nicantlaca people. Like I said, mixed blood, full blood, but that does not take us from being indigenous, that does not take us away from our rights to this land that we're on. And we welcome everyone to learn this history, to start questioning what is presented to you on the television and through your education system. It's time that we take ownership of what belongs to us, starting with our identity, starting with our culture, starting with what comes out of our minds, what comes into our minds, everything we need to be in control of what's happening to our people now, tomorrow, and forever. This is time for us to wake up. And we in the Michigan Movement, we invite you to check out our website, come to the lectures, look at these videos because we're trying to make that change. We're trying to liberate our people lecture by lecture, presentation by presentation, and this is the information that we're offering to everyone. So thank you very much, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you.